rate payers and taxpayers to bring much needed transparency and accountability to the board of directors and to lead Santee Cooper fairly and honestly while the General Assembly determines its fate. Peter McCoy is a graduate of Hampton Sydney University and Regent University School of Law. He's married to Jennifer McCoy and has three children, May Laughlin, Lucy Davis, and Peter Michael III. Peter served as a prosecutor in the Ninth Circuit Solicitor's Office for five years from 2005 to 2010 and handled thousands of cases involving violence, guns, and drugs. In 2010, he was elected to serve in the South Carolina House, representing the people of District 115 in Charleston County. Peter was elected by his colleagues to serve as the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, where he sponsored legislation requiring mandatory reporting of child sexual abuse, as well as legislation establishing a, minim, uh, excuse me, a minimum sentence for those who commit a crime while out on bond. Last year, President Trump chose Peter to serve as the United States Attorney for South Carolina, and he was confirmed by the United States Senate. Under his direction, his office targeted fraud, civil wrongdoing, and criminal activity related to the coronavirus, also attacked public corruption. He fought to keep South Carolina communities safe from violence and drugs, and he prosecuted health care fraud, and he placed renewed emphasis on eradicating human trafficking and child exploitation. Chief among his numerous cases are those stemming from his exhaustive investigation into issues surrounding the construction of the VC Summer Nuclear Station. My, my preference is to sell Santee Cooper. My preference is to sell Santee Cooper, but the status quo at Santee Cooper is unacceptable even in the short term. The agency and its leadership have repeatedly displayed institutional arrogance and contempt for the state law and for the truth. Their incompetence helped create the largest power nuclear fiasco in modern times. They've saddled their customers with billions of dollars in debt and have ignored the authority of our constitutional officers as well as the General Assembly creating a toxic environment inside this very state house. I am confident that Peter McCoy will be a true change agent and he will work to change the culture of closed door deals and secret contracts at Santee Cooper. And on the question of whether to sell Santee Cooper, I am confident that he will do what he thinks is best for the ratepayers and taxpayers in South Carolina. Peter McCoy. Thank you, Governor. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Governor, thank you for this day, and thank you for the nomination, and thank you for your trust that you have placed in me um, and nominating me, nominating me to this position. It is a true honor to stand up here with my former colleagues from the House of Representatives. I'm here today to accept the nomination from the governor and, again, to thank him for his confidence, his trust, and his faith that he has placed into me. And we've got a little bit of a process left to go when we go through the Senate confirmation, so I look forward to working with the South Carolina Senate. I look forward to going through the confirmation process, and I look forward to continuing to build on my relationship with them that I had while I was in the South Carolina House of Representatives. Again, we've got a little ways to go on this, and um, I'm looking forward to the process. And I'll tell you, if I am fortunate enough, and if I am lucky enough to be confirmed by the South Carolina Senate, I pledge to the people of South Carolina, especially, specifically to the ratepayers of South Carolina, that I will continue to put my heart and my soul into this operation and into this service for South Carolina. And again, it's so important to have someone in there that's willing to give 110 percent. And that if I'm lucky enough to be confirmed, that's what I'm looking forward to do. But again, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Again, I thank my colleagues for being up here with me. It means the world to me to stand up here with you again. I uh, miss seeing you all in Columbia. But again, thank you for the opportunity, Governor, to be here. And thanks for the opportunity to serve. Thank you. Yes, sir. sir. Thank you, sir. Speaker Lucas. Yes, sir. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon, everybody, and it's truly a, a great day in South Carolina. Governor, I want to congratulate you on making an outstanding appointment in Peter McCoy. You know, they're, they're good choices. They're, they're better choices. And then at times, there's the absolute best choice that you can make for a position, and that choice is Peter McCoy. Um, Peter, um, as most of us know, is from Winsburg, Fairfield. He's the son of Pete and Lucy McCoy, who live in Hartsville. And um, we have talked, the governor and I, Peter's daddy, about this position. Peter McCoy 
goes into nothing lightly. If he accepts a position, he accepts it with the ability to give 100% with the desire to do that. And as we talked to Peter over the last two weeks, um, we have convinced him that he is certainly the individual to lead Sandy Cooper. Um, there are a number of reasons why Peter is the exact right man for this job at this time. And I went, before I came in here, I wanted to go back through and think about everything Peter McCoy has done as it's related to, to V.C. Sumner and Scanna and Sandy Cooper. And Peter, I wrote everything down and could not believe the work and the hours that you put into this process and this issue. Um, Peter has an exponential understanding of Sandy Cooper and the entire process. He chaired the House's response to the V.C. summer disaster um, in Winsboro with Sandy Cooper and Scanna. He chaired that committee for over a year, taking testimony um, from groups, individuals, Scanna, Sandy Cooper, um, that gave him a tremendous understanding of the workings of that process. He um, put forward legislation that reformed the Public Service Authority in South Carolina and um, put forth legislation that also reformed um, the Public Service Authority in South Carolina while he was chair of the House Judiciary Committee. As U.S. Attorney, his prosecution led to guilty pleas of SCANA executives for their role in the V.C. summer disaster. So when Peter McCoy's name is put forward, it's put forward not only as an individual, but as an individual who has accumulated reams and reams of information about the inner workings of Santee Cooper. Again, I could not be any prouder to stand here with Peter along with his colleagues. I can tell you that in working with Peter, he is a strong advocate for transparency at Sandy Cooper. With Peter, I can tell you decisions won't be made in the back room and then announced in public. They'll be made in public with all ratepayers and all taxpayers looking at what Sandy Cooper do does. He's exactly the type of individual that can bring the cultural um, shift that that agency needs. I think Peter McCoy and the Senate, as they debate reform, at Sandy Cooper, I think Peter McCoy is the first step in that reform. So I would urge the Senate, as they debate what we in the House have already done, put forth a reform effort at Sandy Cooper and a sale proposition. I hope the Senate will take a look at Peter McCoy as that one individual who can come in and be the first step in that reform of an agency that's in badly needed reform. So Peter, um, on behalf of all the House members who are standing with you today, congratulations. There is no better man for this job. Thank you, Speaker. Yes, sir. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Governor, your previous nominee for this position, Charlie Condon, did not make it through the screening process. What conversations did you have with senators? What feedback have you gotten that you didn't leave it? I think you've probably read a lot of it in the newspapers. There's been nothing but uh, positive response to this. Uh, I and others think that Peter McCoy is the perfect man for this job. He has uh, a knowledge of, 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 what is, uh, of what the situation is, but also as a state and federal prosecutor, of course, as a lawyer, that's a, that's a big help. And he's willing to take the job. It's a tough job, but he's willing to take it, and he's the right man for the job. Yes, sir. Ms. McKinney, did you have one? Yes, sir. You said you were kind of open minded on the sale question. Governor made it very clear where he is on that. Uh, do you not feel your, uh, uh, your job is kind of carried in form? I don't. And, um, you know, I've had those conversations with the governor, and I've, I've made it clear um, that I have to go into this decision um, being an independent thinker, being able to analyze the decisions myself. And again, the decision doesn't come down to me, it's not my decision. And I've jokingly said to my friends, you know, again, if I'm lucky enough to be confirmed by the Senate, this is going to be a decision that the legislature has to make. Um, again, and I've left that realm and I'm no longer there, so I'm coming into this situation and this new experience with an open mind, and I'm going to keep that open mind. And the law provides it's not the board's decision, it is the legislature's decision. That's correct. Decision. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Do you view this as a short-term appointment, or do you think this could be potentially a you know, four-year? It depends. It depends. That uh, we are uh, we are prepared for it to be a long-term. It's a seven-year appointment. Uh, the legislature has already spent about four years uh, trying to decide what to do or what not to do. We don't know when a decision will be made or if a decision will be made. But in the meantime, it's a large organization. A lot of people depend on it for the electricity. It's got to be run properly. And that's why we have to have Peter McCoy at the helm as chairman of the board to see that the right things are done to protect the people of our state and to protect the assets of that institution. Um, yes, And again, we touched on this a little bit, but while I'm going through the Senate confirmation process and while I have that ahead of me, um, I think it's a little bit premature to talk about potential first 100 days. But um, I obviously have some things in mind that I'd like to do and things I'd like to learn. And again, I'm going into this process. Um, I, have, I have, do have an extensive background um, in the utility industry and in the situation that happened at VC Summer as well as with Santee. But I'm here to learn as well. I mean, I need to take in everything that I can, all the information that I can, and I'll continue to learn. And, um, and then make some assessments from there. On the things you'd like to do, would you be willing to expand on those? Again, I'm going to wait till I go through the confirmation process. Thank if, you. If you are concerned, how are you going to regain the public's trust? Um, I, think that's a, I think that's twofold. Um, I think there are a couple of things that need to happen that are essential right now with Santee Cooper. Um, I need to establish a firm and good relationship with the legislature. And I want to make sure that is a first and foremost priority. Again. Um, whether it's a perceived issue or a perceived conflict that's with the legislature, I want to be the face of that in helping to reestablish those connections and making sure that people fully understand what's going on behind closed doors at Santee. Um, and again, that leads into my next kind of priority. Um, the transparency of what happens there because it is a state agency is of utmost importance. So again, me coming in there, making sure that ratepayers, most importantly the ratepayers, know what's happening there I think is, is a very important thing to do and do so quickly and that helps establish that trust right away. Mr. McCoy, you know, uh, the speaker kind of went over, you've been very involved with Santee Cooper for, well, I guess, what did I say, four years now. What do you think of the organization and what are your thoughts coming in and where are its strengths or its weaknesses? Well, again, I think Santee Cooper is rich in history. I mean, you look at what's happened there and you look at the formation of it, you look, go back to the 1930s and the New Deal, um, it has played a significant role in providing power and electricity to the rural parts of our state, which again are essential. You go back to those times and you think about the history right now in terms of how people and when people have had electricity provided to them, and it hasn't been that long. Um, and when you look at the folks, especially in rural South Carolina and how Santee has affected them, again, they're rich in history. Um, again, this is a complex issue um, that, that I look forward to taking on. Two more questions. Thank you very much. Thank you all so much. Appreciate the time. Appreciate Governor, thank you. Appreciate it so much. Thank you, sir. Hey, you are you pronouncing it? Getting there, right? <laughs> Give me that number. <laughs> That's right. Thank you all so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. 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 Thank